What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, this is episode number 80 and we start today's episode off with some player training, shock horror and also a look at the league table once again, as you can see we discussed this in the last episode, 6 games to go now, 10 points is the deficit between us and 4th placed Everton. We know now it is pretty much guaranteed we're not going to make the top four this season and we won't qualify for the Champions League via the Premier League table. So, yeah, it's uh, it's been a tough season in the Premier League. There's there's no denying it. You know, we discussed it in the last episode. We slipped up far too many times this season. Some really bad losses to West Ham, Crystal Palace, Bournemouth, big slip-ups. We slipped up against Burnley in the very last episode in our last Premier League game, 0-0 away at Turf Moor. It's pretty much guaranteed now the only way we can have Champions League football at Brown Lane next season is by winning the Europa League. Having said that, there's six games to go in the Premier League and we still got a job to do. Not only do we need to cement Europa League football, uh, sorry, Europa League football even, next season at Bramwell Lane, at the, at Bramwell Lane at the very least, we need to at least give the fans something to celebrate in the final six games. We can't just lie down now and say, oh, well, there's too many points between us and Everton. Let's just give up. No, we've got to keep on fighting. You push till the very end. And so heading into this game, I wanted to make a statement. We'd just beaten Fiorentina in the last game on Thursday night, but our last Premier League game being that that slip up away at Turf Moor which effectively ended our Champions League hopes for next season. Heading back to Bramwell Lane for our first game in the Premier League since then, we wanted to win this game and win it big. And we'd start off with that intention and we'd start off on the front foot and we'd start it off 22 minutes in, three goals up. Dominic Calvert-Lewin and Ivan Tony starting together in this game and to us it's quite rare to see these guys starting together nowadays. More often than not, it's Calvert-Lewin and Morelos or Ivan and Alfredo. But in this game, Calvert-Lewin and Tony together have to say first half an hour these guys were literally unstoppable. DCL got another goal to add to his best season in a Sheffield United shirt this year. That's his 20th in the Premier League, which now means that he and Ivan have combined for over 40 goals in the league this season, both being in the 20-plus mark, and they combined for our fourth goal together, which I really liked as well. Nice ball through by DCL, Ivan with the finish, and it's been so hard for me in this second half of the season to know which strike partnership to go with game after game after game. Do we go with DCL and Alfredo? Do we go with DCL and Ivan? Or do we go with Ivan and Alfredo? I mean, you know, all three of the strikers have been in incredible form in this second half of the season. It's always been so sad to say to one of them the night before the game, Sorry, mate, but it's it's not you this weekend. You'll be on the bench. You know, one of those three is always on the bench. I can't accommodate them all. And it's been so sad to know that one of those three is always going to be uh, upset knowing they're not starting the game and they're not getting a chance to score. In the end, though, I got this one right, definitely. Calvert Lewin and Ivan Tony shared the champagne come full time. They were both sensational in that game, both getting two goals and assisting one of the other two goals for each other. That was really nice to see. However, unfortunately, despite the big win, despite the statement 4 0 victory there, with five games to go, the gap remains at 10. Everton won their game as well, which does mean now with, with five games remaining, I mean, we need to win all of our five and all Everton needs to do is win two of the final five, I think, if my maths is right. So, yeah, it's uh, it's it's basically over. There's no chance of making it out. And again, we will fight until the very end. We will continue to push and we'll continue to wait for slip-ups. But the team that slipped us this season has not been Everton, it's not been Chelsea, it's not been Spurs, it's been us. But uh, still, second game of four in today's episode. Now taking on Huddersfield Town uh, back in the Premier League after winning promotion last season. Uh, of course, this season, once again, rock bottom of the table. I feel so sorry for the Terriers. Seven points, that's all they've got all throughout the course of the season. Remember back in season two, they set a new record for lowest amount of points in the Premier League, I believe, with six was it six or seven? One of the two. Well, once again, this season, they've, they've got seven. It's been a really tough season for the Terriers. So it's going to end up at this rate, unless they've got a nice run towards the end of the season. They will have the worst record for points in the Premier League season twice. They'll be the bottom two. So heading into this game, feeling very confident. I still think it's a very strong lineup for the game, even with the FA Cup semi-final against Nottingham Forest on the weekend, because I wasn't going to under underestimate the Terriers. Because speaking of slip ups remember last season, one of the six or seven points they got came against us here at Bramwell Lane. We drew the game 1-1. So heading into this one, I wasn't underestimating them, despite their abysmal league campaign. I felt as they could still spring a surprise on us. We did lead by one in the first half, courtesy of Ivan, and then the second half. This was really nice 
likes to see. Ollie Shaw and Ebrett Gizé this season have been our top uh, assist makers and they're both in double digits. Shaw, what a cross to Gizé, picks out Ebrett Gizé as our two playmakers set each other up there for the goal. Great cross by Shaw, great finish by Gizé. 2-0 Blades, points in the bag. So no slip up in this one. 2-0 the final score, three points for the host. But as you'll see, come the full-time whistle, we check the scores on BBC Sport and as you can see, Everton thrashed Leicester away at the King Power Stadium by three goals to nil, which means with four games to go, the point deficit remains at 10 and the goal difference gets worse as well. And that means now four games to go, all Everton need to do is win one more time out of the final four fixtures and that will guarantee that we'll not be playing Champions League football next season unless we can win the Europa League. And again, we've only got ourselves to blame. You know, we slipped up far too many times this season. Yes, we got the win there. Yes, we beat Southampton before that, but far too many slip ups. And particularly in the first half of the season as well. If you remember in the first half of the season, particularly around December time, we went on that run where we lost like five games in, in six. We'd, we'd lost like five games in six or, or four in five or around that regardless. That kind of form right there. It's, it's going to be hard to make that up in the second half of the season, and it has been hard to make that up, and sadly we just haven't been able to do it. So that's it pretty much confirmed now. We'll not be qualifying for the Champions League unless we win the Europa League. However, for the third of four games today, we would head to Wembley for the first time in the series to take on Nottingham Forest in the FA Cup semi-final. The championship side right now just outside the playoffs in the second tier of English football. And Liverpool would await the winners of this semi-final tie here. And with all the bookies having us as massive favourites for the game, we'd started off looking like the Premier League side that we are, looking on the front foot, looking for that first goal. But the Nottingham Forest goalkeeper had other ideas. He was just on fire. In the first half, we were absolutely dominant, getting chance after chance after chance. But this guy was refusing to be beaten. Half, halfway through the game, it was still 0-0. And we'd had so many shots, so many attempts, but Samba in the Nottingham Forest goal was just on one. Literally turning up to this game, knowing it was the game of his life, and performing like his life depended on it. Save after save after save. We should have been four or five nil up at half time and already booking our place once again at Wembley for the FA Cup final. But instead, we walked into the dressing room, tied at nil nil, deadlocked, and it was only because Samba was having an absolute stormer in the Nottingham Forest goal. Still 0-0, but I didn't go harsh on the boys at the break. I said, just keep doing what you're doing. Eventually, you'll find that back in the net, and eventually we would. Three minutes after the restart, 45,000 Sheffield United fans can celebrate at Wembley the goal to finally break that deadlock. And i got to be honest here, I kind of felt sorry for the goalkeeper. I really did. He was in such brilliant form. And for this goal, I think his defender kind of got in his way. Either way, it's DCL heading it in, making it 1-0. And finally, I guess you could call us the villains in this game. The Premier League side taking on the Championship side. Everyone's rooting for the underdog. But we were 1-0 up finally. And 15 minutes later, we double the score and make it to... Alfredo Morelos, he's been our player of the season, no doubt about it. £28 million and worth every single penny. Fires it past Samba into the back of the net. And you see what it means on the sidelines as well. Relief, relief. Two goals up and surely on course for our first ever FA Cup final. But Samba, even at 2-0 down, was still pulling off the heroics. Final score though, 2-0. That's it. It's all over. We do avoid the Epic Cup set. We felt very confident heading into the game that we wouldn't have a slip up. We did what we needed to do. We should have won it by more. We give credit to Nottingham Forest though. The championship side going all the way to Wembley to reach semi-final. Give them some credit. Give them some props. And give this man the champagne as well. Samba turning up on the big stage at Wembley. Putting in a man of the match display. Making brilliant, brilliant saves. However, our two goals do ensure we have booked our place at our first ever Cup final in the series. We've got Liverpool at Wembley on the 20th of May in the final game of the season. Book your ticket, say the date, 20th of May, our first ever Cup final. Sheffield United have not won the FA Cup in over a hundred years. It's been over a century's worth of hurt for Sheffield United fans. Is this the time when the FA Cup 
The premier domestic cup competition in English football is in the Sheffield United Trophy cabinet come the end of the season. Well, if we're going to do it, we're going to have to beat one of the best sides in the world, not just England, Liverpool, to win it. Jurgen Klopp side in the final. Bring them on, though. I can't wait. Our first cup final of the series. Come on. Absolutely buzzing. But uh, still, fourth and final game of today's episode. And it was time for the first leg of our Europa League semi-final tie away in the south of France against Monaco. As we've been discussing it quite frequently throughout the course of the past two episodes, we know now, in order to have Champions League football, we'll need to win this competition. So we've already booked our place in one cup final this season. Now we need another. Taking on Monaco away from home in the semis. we would started off strong and we got the goal just six minutes in as well and it was the Northern Ireland to Northern Ireland connection that saw us break the deadlock Jamal Lewis with a brilliant step over beats his man rolls it across the face of the six yard area and who's there at the back stick arriving it's the teenage talent Barry Walsh puts it into the back of the net goalkeeper gets a touch but he can't keep it out and can we give some props to Jamal Lewis as well how good has he been in this second half of the season. He's been one of our best players. 1-0 to the Blades. He sets up Walsh. However, our lead would not last long. Six minutes after we broke the deadlock, Eric Bailly put Monaco back on level terms. The former Manchester United defender heads in across from a short corner. They caught us napping there. God is what Barry Walsh was doing on the floor in the goal line there. But the Ivorian nods it past Dean. It's 1-1. Monaco have their equaliser. In a first half, we'd played better, but we're now back on level terms but we would restore the lead right before the break and it was the bros that got the goal for us Ollie Shaw to Ivan Tony. 3-40, 2-1, Sheffield United, brilliant finish by Ivan as well, out of the reach of the goalkeeper, into the far corner, Sheffield United 2, Monaco 1, and once again, heading to the south of France, it was all about the attacking prowess of this Sheffield United side, all the big boys in Europe are taking notice of now, not just because of the fact we're winning, but we're continuing to score goal after goal after goal! Oh yes, he's a 10 minutes after the restart makes it 3-1 as Sheffield United get a two goal cushion and their third away goal on the night. I love this guy to pieces. What a signing he's been from Queen's Park Rangers. Great through by Tony. Takes a touch. Tight angle. Weaker left foot. Problem freeze, eh? Not a fucking chance. This guy is just so cool. Wonderful finish. In off the far post. Out of the outstretch. Left leg of the goalkeeper. And into the back of the net. Monaco 1. Sheffield United 3. And as we continue to attack with 13 minutes to go, Ivan Tony makes it four. We are all about the attack. We are the top scoring team in the Europa League. This is what our game is built on and there isn't a single team that we've faced so far in this competition that's had an answer to our high powered offence. Whether it was a rapid Vienna in around a 32, Schalke in around a 16, Fiorentina in the quarters or now Monaco in the semis. Not a single team has been able to stop our attack. 4-1 the final score and we are 90 minutes away from a place in the Europa League final. Unless Monaco can score four at Brownwell Lane, which is looking very unlikely, we will be playing in that final, our second cup final of the season alongside the FA Cup final. And we'll have one shot, one opportunity at a European piece of silverware for the first time in the club's history and also Champions League football next season. Provided we don't have an epic collapse against Monaco, which hopefully we won't do. We will see the second leg in the next episode, guys, plus the final four games of the Premier League season. Thank you very much for watching this one. I really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have done, please drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode of the season where we wrap up the Premier League and play that second leg very soon.